the stomach <coughs> the stomach opens into small intestine now which part is small intestine now somewhere here we have the pyloric stomach so th this area is the pyloric stomach so this is somewhere here we have pyloric sphincter so here we have ileocecal valve so you can see ileocecal valve here you can see pyloric sphincter here think that this is pyloric sphincter so between pyloric sphincter and a valve a valve a valve is present between ileum and cecum hmm? this is ileum this is cecum there is a valve so everything present in between these two it is called a small intestine so it is a narrow tubular part present in the abdominal region and it is surrounded by large intestine you see this this is narrow and tubular part it is present in the abdomen it is present between pyloric sphincter and ileocecal valve and it is surrounded by large intestine now the small intestine is the largest part small intestine is the it is the longest part it is around 7 meters 6 to 7 meters in length it is again divided into three parts one is duodenum jejunum and ileum i l e u m i l i u m is a bone present in pelvic girdle this is ileum right now it is divided into duodenum jejunum ileum the first part is duodenum it is around 25 cm in length roughly roughly it is see this part this this area is the duodenum this c shaped part of small intestine which is at the beginning which is roughly around 25 cm it's a little wider when compared to this area and compared to this area it's little wider so that area which forms an arch it is called duodenum now on one side there is liver that's the liver on other side there is pancreas so that area is the pancreas see this dotted area till here only not this one that's the, that's the spleen this, this area is the spleen and see spleen there spleen is part of immune system Yeah, it's a it's a lymphoid organ. So we are not bothered about that spleen. So you can see pancreas here. You can see liver here. Liver produces bile juice. The bile is temporarily stored inside gallbladder. See that sac-like structure is called gallbladder. Now, for example, this is liver, and that is pancreas. Now, ducts coming from both of them, they join. ducts coming from both of them both of them join and form hepatopancreatic duct hepatopancreatic duct opens into duodenum not shown in this diagram clearly but pancreatic duct and hepatic duct combine together to form hepatopancreatic duct hepatopancreatic duct is opening into duodenum now inside the wall of duodenum there are brunner's glands Brunner's glands are generally present in submucous. The other glands, when I say other glands, whether it's the gastric glands or intestinal gland, they are present in mucus. But the Brunner's glands present inside the wall of the intestine of the duodenum. They are present inside the submucous. We'll see the layers a little later. So, out of the three layers, the third layer, the out of the four layers, the third layer, this is mucus and this is submucous. from outside if you see serosa muscular layer submucosa mucus the innermost layer is the mucus generally glands gastric glands intestinal glands are present here but 
In case of duodenum, Brunner's glands are present inside the submucus. That's the difference. And when you come to the next two parts, the jejunum and ileum. Jejunum is roughly around 2.5 meters. Ilium is roughly around 3.5 meters. All rough estimates. That's, that's the jejunum. And that's the ilium. Now which part is jejunum, which part is ilium? Present at the junction between the duodenum and jejunum. And it is a, that muscle comes and attaches to the adjoining connective tissue. It comes and attaches to the adjoining connective tissue. And that marks the difference between duodenum and jejunum externally. Now which marks the difference between jejunum and ileum? On a broad terms, you can see the left upper region in the abdomen. The left upper region is the jejunum. The right lower region is ileum. You can see this is the ileum, that is the jejunum. So jejunum is present on the upper side, left side. Ileum is present on the right side, lower side. That is the broad difference between jejunum and ileum. In both jejunum and ileum, you can see digestion is going on, digestion is being completed and absorption also is being completed. Digestion and absorption occurs in both jejunum and as well as ileum. If you see the other difference between jejunum and ileum, jejunum is thicker and more vascular, but ileum is thinner and less vascular. Vascular, vascular means blood supply. So there are more blood supply, less blood supply, more thicker, less thicker. That's the difference between jejunum and ileum. Ileum is the longest part of small intestine. Now internally, if you observe, Now internally, if you observe small intestine, you can see plica circulis. Something called plica circulis in jejunum. Plica circulis, they are absent in ileum. Now, what are plica circulis? Plica circulis are also called circular folds, also called walls of Kerkri. All same. Now inside jejunum, if I take the jejunum and observe, take cross section, you can see volvular flaps. They are small flap like structure, elevations and they are in circular fashion. Some of them they extend half of the circumference, some of them extend two thirds of the circumference, some of them full, some of them are full circles and some of them are even spiral. They are volvular flaps. Some are larger in size, some are smaller in size. But generally they are alternating with each other and the largest flaps are around 8 millimeters. There are up to 800 plica circulates inside small intestine. Remember, we have discussed inside the stomach there are something called gastric rugae, some folds called gastric rugae. Now when we take in food material, gastric rugae will disappear. But these folds, these folds I told you are called plica circulates. They are called circular folds or walls of Kirkring, all same. Now when these folds, when we take in food material, these folds do not disappear. They are permanent. Even in, or even in the presence of food or in the absence of food, the folds are continuously there. That is not the condition uh, for the gastric rugae. Gastric rugae, when, when the stomach is empty, See, stomach, normal condition, it encloses 50 ml of fifty ml of volume only. But when you take food material, it increases in size. It increases, it can accommodate one to one and a half liter of food inside. But when you are taking food sumptuously, when you are taking food sumptuously, 
so it can expand to accommodate up to 4 liters by volume so when 4 liters of food is pumped into the stomach when it has expanded under that condition gastric fluke will disappear but relevant on the food that is present inside the intestine the plica circulates they are not disappear they are up to 800 plica circulate circulates inside the jejunum and they increase the surface area 5 to 8 times surface area increased 5 to 8 times now the plica circulates start somewhere in the middle of duodenum Let's say for example up to here it is jejunum hmm? this is jejunum this is ileum if you think like that if you think like that from here from the middle of duodenum up to middle of jejunum they are larger in size from the middle of jejunum up to middle of ileum they gradually decrease in size and the remaining half of ileum they are absent so if i take duodenum the first half it is absent next half it is large but if i take jejunum the first half it is large the second half it is smaller if i take ileum they are still there but they are actually reducing in size and gradually they disappear by first half itself in the second half they gone they are absent so plica circulates completely which part it is present it is present in jejunum it is absent in ileum inside the ileum there are something called as patches inside the ileum there is something called as pear patches pear patches pear patches they are present only in ileum they are not present in jejunum now what are pear patches sir conrad pear as we synonymous who identified them they are present they are aggregated lymph nodules they are few centimeters in length they are, they are elongated nodules few centimeters in length they they are either oval in shape or round in shape few centimeters in size and they are present inside the mucus the innermost layer is called mucus sometimes they even extend up to submucus they are present inside the ileum they are up to 30 in number and their number peaks in between 50 and 15 and 25 years of age in between 15 and 25 years of age their number will peak their function is immune surveillance in case of ileum there is pear patches in case of duodenum you will see brunner's glands but in case of jejunum you don't find either of them so anatomically how you differentiate duodenum jejunum ileum is that in case of duodenum there is no brunner's glands in in case of duodenum there are there are brunner's glands in case of jejunum there is no brunner's glands no pear patches but in case of ileum there are pear patches and in case of jejunum we discuss there there are plica circulates and in case of ileum we have this pear patches they are aggregated lymph nodules and their function is immune surveillance pear patches now in jejunum and ileum we have villi several finger like structures called as villus now we know inside the small intestine throughout the small intestine digestion is completed absorption occurs daily 8 to 9 liters of fluids are entering into small intestine except 1 and 1/2 liters everything else is absorbed that includes 1 to 1 and 1/2 liters of food that we take in the solid as well as liquid and remaining 7 liters the remaining 7 liters is a gut secretions very secretions now out of 8 to 9 liters that is coming into small intestine around 1 and 1/2 liter is only is entering into large intestine the remaining all is absorbed inside small intestine the absorption occurs with the help of villi the finger like projections are called as villi now here i drew a structure of villus 
Now, this finger like projection is called Willis. It is around 0.5 to 1.6 millimeters. The length is around half to one, one and a half millimeter. So it's very small. And it is covered externally by simple columnar epithelium. Simple columnar epithelium. It's, it's surrounded by simple column. This simple columnar epithelium is part of mucosal layer. And it is continuous with the crypts of Libercool. So this, this simple columnar epithelium is continuous with the intestinal glands. The intestinal glands in small intestine are called crypts of labor cool. Remember the crypts of labor cool, gradually the cells are producing enzymes. The cells with that enzyme, for example, if this is a cell, gradually you can see enzymes are produced and that cells with enzymes are called enterocytes. They are formed here and they, they move in this direction, they, they move in this direction, they come to the top, they come to the top and gradually they detach. The enterocytes are formed here, they move towards the apex of the villus and gradually they get separated. Now when, when the cells are separating, when they are moving, new cells are formed by stem cells. At the base we have got stem cells which produce new cells. And as a protection to stem cells, we have got panet cells. To protect the stem cells against microbes, we have got something called as panet cells. Now enterocytes, they move to the top, they detach. And these cells, some of the enterocytes, they contain microvilli. Some of these enterocytes, they contain microvilli. Now if I take one cell, so this, each of the cell will contain microvilli. Each cell contains up to 1000 microvilli. So you can see huge number of microvilli. And the length of microvilli is around 1 micron. 1 micron in length. So we have got 4 million villi. The villi increase the surface area by 30 fold. But we also have several microvilli, thousands of microvilli. And the microvilli increases the surface area by 600 fold. So we got like a circulars, we got villi, we got microvilli. All these increase the surface area from 30 square meters, it has gone to 250 square meters. It's almost a thousand times. The surface area, once the surface area is increased, so there is more contact with the epithelium of small intestine to food. So more amount of food is absorbed inside. Now inside if you observe a villus, you can see lacteal. Lacteal is a capillary coming from lymph vessel. Lymph vessel capillary is called lacteal. Either side you will see blood capillaries. Blood capillaries. Say this is artery, this is vein, their capillaries are entering inside. And we can also find smooth muscles. So in between you will find connective tissue with smooth muscles, involuntary muscles are present. There are blood capillaries coming from arteries and veins. And there is also lymph vessel, it capillary, it is coming, it is called as lacteal. Externally simple columnar epithelium which is continuous with crypts of labor cool, stem cells, panels cells, that's, that's the condition. Each of the cell contains several microvilli. This is the structure of one villus. Well, each villus is around half a millimeter to one and a half millimeter. Now if I take one cell and observe, you will see up to thousand microvilli. Each microvillus is around one micron in length. 
So presence of plaque circulars, villus and microvilli increase the surface area to up to 1000 folds. Now much of the digestion is over inside the small intestine and much of the absorption is also over. Only undigested food along with some water is pushed outside through this wall. This wall is called ileocecal wall. So through this ileocecal wall it has come into large intestine the large intestine the large intestine through ileocecal wall food has come into large intestine now you call this area this this total area is called large intestine it forms an arc surrounding small intestine now length of large intestine is only 1.5 meters it is less than one quarter of small intestine I told you small intestine, it is around 7 meters or so. Now this is only 1.5 meters. That means it's much smaller. And the small intestine diameter is around 3 or 4 centimeters. But here diameter is around 6 centimeters. So its diameter is large. Since its diameter is larger, we call it as large intestine. So, area from ileocecal wall up to anus that is large intestine. It includes cecum. The first part is the cecum. This is the cecum. So, when I say, when I say cecum, it is this area. It's, it's that area. It is roughly around 13 centimeters. Terminally, it has, it, it is opening into a vermiform appendix. So, cecum and vermiform appendix, vermiform worm like appendix means elongation. Now, in case of herbivorous animals like rabbit, cecum and vermiform appendix, so they contain cellulase producing bacteria. But in case of human being, these two, with reference to digestive system, they are vestige. But in case of human being, the vermiform appendix is regarded as an abdominal tonsil. So it's a lymphoid organ. The vermiform appendix is a lymphoid organ, like pear's patches, like tonsils, like thymus, right? But for digestive system, it's vestige. Now the cecum, see, till this line, this, this is cecum, this is cecum. And above this, it is called colon. It is called colon. From here till here, it is colon. It includes the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and sigmoid colon. This is the ascending colon. It's going to the top. And it forms a flexure near the liver. It's called hepatic flexure. Hepatic means liver. Flexor means it curves. It curves near the liver. Now this area is the transverse column. From here till here it is the transverse column. Transverse column. So that's the transverse column. And then on the left side, see this transverse column is present at the level of 10th rib. 10th rib. You can see 12 pairs of lips, 10th rib. It's present at the level of the 10th rib. On the left side, it forms an indentation. It forms a, a, an indentation with the spleen. So there you call it a splenic flexure. So you can see spleen is slightly pushed to the left and it forms a flexure. It's called splenic, splenic flexure. And this is the descending column. The descending column, it descends on the left side of the abdomen, uh, just beneath the kidney, just beneath the kidney. Hmm? Kidney is on the other side. So just above the kidney, it comes downwards, it comes closer to the left hip region. And uh, this area, it forms pelvic column. You call it as pelvic column or sigmoid column. From here till here, see, it goes into the pelvis and it curves S-shaped, it curves into S. The cecum opens into colon. Colon includes the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and the pelvic colon. 
the ascending column this ascending column it goes to the top forms a hepatic flexure near the level of the liver it forms a flexure and continues as transverse column the transverse column is present at the level of 10th pair of ribs and it is attached to the peritoneum on the left side the colon the transverse colon forms an indentation with the spleen it forms splenic flexure so this is the splenic flexure that's the spleen this forms a splenic flexure and it comes downwards as descending column the descending column continues anterior to the kidney left kidney and comes closer to the left hip bone left hip bone and after coming near the hip bone it takes s shaped it becomes s shaped and enters into the pelvis then it is called pelvic colon or sigmoid colon now what is happening inside colon around 1 and 1/2 liters of and of of the food which we after absorption the left out food it is 1 and 1/2 liters or so so it still contains a huge quantity of water it is entering into large intestine the main function of large intestine is to absorb water so much of the water is absorbed and only a small quantity of that fecal matter is pushed into next part the next part is called as rectum now before that this colon colon has got three important parts one is pineal colon if i take cross section of colon so you can see at three locations at three locations equally spaced equally spaced smooth muscles in the wall of colon at three locations you can see bands of smooth muscles they resemble tinea solium tinea solium is tape form so they are present in the wall of colon that's why they are called tinea coli another thing is hostra hostra also called sacculations now say this is colon this is colon you can see tinea coli tinea coli are little short tinea coli these are tinea coli tinea coli are little shorter when compared to the length of the colon and these are present inside the wall so as such you can see because the length of the colon is shorter when compared to the smooth muscles the wall of the colon it, it is not straight it forms pouches once once that muscle is in contracted state this also will contract and it forms pouches the pouches are called as hostra or sacculations and lastly appendicis epiploic appendicis epiploic they are also called epiploic appendices they are nodules fat nodules in ascending colon above ascending colon and descending colon they are present in two rows just beneath the peritoneum just beneath the peritoneum above above the colon above the colon and beneath the peritoneum ascending colon two rows descending colon two rows transverse colon one row the aggregated fat nodules of unknown function the function is not clear they are called appendicis epiploic these three are characteristic feature of colon now what is happening inside colon water is absorbed out of 1 and 1/2 liter which is entering into large intestine water is absorbed the remaining undigested food is acted upon by various bacteria and then the undigested food on fermentation the undigested food becomes fecal matter so that fecal matter now comes into rectum now what is the fecal matter now undigested food material substances which are not digested which include cellulose hemicellulose lignin these all they are important component of the fibers that we take in fats fat compounds and the dead bacteria and the mucus together is called fix so it is temporarily stored inside the rectum but then again inside the colon we have huge amount of bacteria 
Some of these bacteria are symbiotic in nature. They produce vitamins B1, B2, B3, B9 and vitamin K. Certain vitamins B1 thiamine, B2 riboflavin, B3 niacin, B9 folacin or folic acid and vitamin K. Certain vitamins are synthesized by the gut flora inside colon. That means these vitamins are absorbed directly through the wall of large intestine. And the undigested food will temporarily stored inside rectum. And then we have a, a, a short canal called anal canal. Anal canal opens outside by anus. Anus is guarded by two sphincters, the outer and inner sphincter. The inner sphincter, the inner sphincter is made up of skeletal muscles. The outer sphincter, inner anal sphincter, outer anal sphincter. The inner anal sphincter is made up of skeletal muscles. The outer anal sphincter is made up of smooth muscles. And whenever this opens, that undigested food stored in rectum is pushed outside. It is called as defecation.